Hello, welcome to worship for Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, we are here at Holy Cross Lutheran in Mountain Home. I also would like to say welcome to Christ by the Lake Lutheran Church in Bull Shoals, as I probably will not be doing a Facebook uh, service uh, for them because of the uh, upcoming weather uh, that we're looking at. Uh, the conditions look kind of severe and cold, and then added snow on top of that. Uh, also, uh, in addition to Sunday, February 14th, Transfiguration, I will probably not do the Ash Wednesday on the Christ by the Lake Facebook page. Instead, I invite you to follow the worship services uh, here on this Holy Cross uh, Lutheran website. Not having in-person worship is difficult for all of us, but out of care for one another, I am not ready to resume in person yet. Uh, our councils, both that of Holy Cross and Christ by the Lake, continue to monitor the situation for both Baxter and Marion counties. I would want to announce though that the longer we go without in-person worship, while it's hopefully protecting people from the COVID, however, it is also taking a, uh, in addition to an emotional toll, is also taking a financial stewardship uh, toll as well on both congregations of Holy Cross and Christ by the Lake. Uh, for example, you know, utility bills keep coming, I know soon, I understand the uh, insurance premium for Holy Cross is going to be due soon. And uh, other ministries, we do as best as we can under the circumstances. So please, once again, consider uh, financial stewardship support, uh, contributions. You may mail into either Holy Cross Lutheran for that ministry or to Christ by the Lake. You can find our mailing addresses in the bulletins or online. So thank you for that. Again, for Ash Wednesday, we will be doing a service for that. To give you a heads up, uh, given the conditions, I do not have ashes to use, and you probably don't have any ready uh, at home. So I invite you, if you wish, uh, to have a little bit of ashes, or you may use uh, a little bit of soil, or even some water in a small dish, or as in the case for the recorded worship service, uh, I won't have any of these, but I will have the feeling, the sensing, making the sign of the cross on the forehead, and uh, I'll have a reflection on that within the Ash Wednesday service. So again, welcome. Uh, with that, may we turn our hearts uh, to worship uh, for this day. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us offer this gift of God's peace to one another. I invite you to home if you have someone with you. And if you're at home, you may even be able to hug or give the kiss of peace. Uh, but if you are home alone, just please sense God is present there with you and his peace he offers to each of us. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you, you search, search us and know us. us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We, we confess, confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward 
failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone, even before the words are on our tongues. You know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace! Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven in the wake of God's forgiveness. We are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. Be silent. 
Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Let us read responsibly the psalm, which is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence, with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The second reading today is from 2 Corinthians verse, chapter 4, verses 3-6. through 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. 
As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. For some time now, decades, there had been a growing interest in genealogy. And there's even a company, Ancestry.com, that still advertises on the television that they can do an extensive family ancestry research for you. Now, when I was much younger, high school and college years, before the television series Roots, I did a little research of my family tree. The one that got my most attention was my great-great-grandfather, Chief Big Thunder of the Penobscot tribe in Maine. Now, that... Uh, I, while I am less than a quarter Native American Indian, it spurred me to do some research on the Penobscot tribe in general. The most emotional thing I found, I found in a book about them, which in the inside of the front cover was a photocopy of the declaration of war by the English king. It listed how much bounty money for an adult male scout, how much for a female, and how much for a child scout. Learning our heritage can lead us to a, hopefully a greater understanding of our identity and hopefully greater compassion for all. In today's Gospel reading, three disciples were confronted with the identity of Jesus. The Jesus they had known was now revealed to them in a new and incredible way. In Mark, the passage takes place between some interesting material. It comes after Peter's confession, you are the Messiah, and Jesus' insistence that he will die, and that those who follow him will also be required to give up much. Then immediately following the trip to the mountaintop, Jesus and the disciples hit the road again on the way to Jerusalem, on the way to the cross. In between these themes of death, comes this wondrous mountaintop experience. In this amazing account, Jesus was physically changed before their eyes in a way that no one had ever seen. Peter had confessed him as the Messiah, but they were unprepared for the visualization of that reality. Now there is much here that echoes themes from ancient Israel. Jesus glowed with the brightness often associated with God's presence in Exodus and elsewhere. There was a voice and a cloud, also indicators in Exodus of the eternal presence with humans. Moses and Elijah were present. They're symbols of the law and the prophecy. This was a vision for people who would understand that they were witnessing something deeply connected to their spiritual heritage and identity. The Jesus they knew as a friend and teacher, traveling companion, rabbi, was somehow uniquely identified with God. Even so, they did not seem to grasp the full magnitude of what they had seen. They knew, though, that it was something big, something far bigger than they had ever witnessed before. Peter, foot in the mouth Peter, 
felt as though he had to say something. He offered that the disciples might build three dwellings, like shrines for a worship place, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. But before anyone could make an answer, a voice spoke out of a bright cloud. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. These were familiar words, the same words spoken by the heavenly voice at Jesus' baptism, at the beginning of his ministry. Now as Jesus moved toward Jerusalem, the words were the same, and these words were added. Listen to him. This account in Mark draws us in some competing directions. First, it draws us back to the past. Like the three disciples stupefied there on the mountain, we see the long history of God in Israel, symbolically enacted through voice, brightness, cloud, and prophet. But also the story draws us toward the future of change. This event is called the Transfiguration because Jesus was transfigured, changed, right before in front of the three. But the disciples, the seas must have been changed also. It is impossible to imagine they could have come down the mountain and left that event behind them. They took it with them. In the future, at times when they wondered about their faith, questioned deep down what the whole experience with Jesus had meant or who he was, they could recall this event and what they had seen. As they tried to follow the teachings of Jesus, they could remember the voice from the cloud, this is my son, listen to him. This is an element of our worship, is it not? In our praise of and experience of God, we find ourselves changed. In worship, we remember together the events of faith and the events of our own lives that have changed us. In communion, we are drawn to recall the self-giving love of God that has brought us this far. In the charge, the words, we are moved to go with our changed hearts and translate them into changed lives when we go out the doors of the sanctuary, when we celebrate Holy Communion. Our changed lives to make a difference in the world in which we live. Worship rearranges how we look at our past and how we imagine our future. In addition to worship, there are other times and places where we can see the glory of God. We must, though, keep our eyes open for the glory and our ears attuned to hear the voice. You can see the glory of God, of course, in the beauty of nature. And also you can hear the voice of God in the cry of a newborn baby, the laughter of a child, the developing expressions of teenagers and young adults, and all of the expressions of love and care we have throughout life. But between this mountaintop transfiguration experience and Easter morning, we walk the valley shadows. It can be more difficult to see the light, and we may feel, feel the chill of a distance from God. But somehow, through the darkness of whatever those moments of experiences may be, we are drawn from the light to the light, from transfiguration to Easter. We focus on the light and splendor of Christ. We listen for him who is light of light. 
We look for him. Look within our hearts. Look to the hungry, poor, sick, and outcast of societies. In the valley of the shadow of death, in the depth of loss, in the crises of faith, in the loneliness of depressions, in the fear of illness, we wonder about the light. Jesus and the three went from the mountaintop of transfiguration to the valley of the cross, where, for the moment, it seemed the light of glory would never be seen again. As we prepare for the journey through Lent to walk the way of the cross, the austerity of the season reminds us of the stark seasons of our lives. Yet, the memory of the past visions of glory is somehow able to sustain us until Christmas morning, when the light of the resurrection dispels the darkness and the glory of the Lord is finally brought to full expression. May we see and reflect his identity here in the world. And may we hear and proclaim his glory to him and to all the world, that they too may come to know and celebrate the glory of Christ Jesus. Amen. For people at home, if you per chance have a hymn book, or maybe can locate on the computer, uh, we sing hymn number three, it's three number 15 in our hymn book, but elsewhere on the computer, How Good Lord to Be Here. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, 
for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, light forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil serv servants, and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer this day, uh, that Christ our healer transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. And for those that are on our minds and in our hearts, those that may be members of either Holy Cross or Christ by the Lake, our neighbors and friends throughout our community, or distant family, all those that may be uh, faced with health challenges, be it COVID-19 uh, or other uh, health issues and situations. We pray for them that, uh, that your Holy Spirit would give them strength and comfort. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Again, this would normally be a time for our offering, but again, I invite you to consider mail-in offering. We continue with the offertory. <laughs> supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, 
shed for you and for all people for their forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the Church say, Amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. May we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may partake at this time the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The holy and precious body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, again, if you could locate the words at all, uh, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
We will. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us in worship. Uh, this concludes the recording of Transfiguration Sunday Worship.